All right, so in this video about sectional charts, we are going to be talking about floors and ceilings of air spaces. This is a super important topic. You have to be able to look at numbers on the sectional chart and figure out what that means in terms of the floor and the ceiling of that airspace, along with knowing what AGL and MSL are. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This first practice problem. What is the floor of the Savannah Class C airspace at the shelf area? Parentheses, outer circle. And then we have three options here, um, just like in the previous video, I would recommend you not actually look at the answers when you're doing this problem on your test because then you sort of make assumptions or you jump to conclusions or you get ahead of yourself basically. I like to come to the answer organically and then compare it to whatever choices I have. So let's go ahead and just skip over the answers and take a look at this figure. Savannah class C, we know it's class C because it's got that red outer circle. What we're asked for here in this problem is what is the floor? So let's go ahead and define two words. So we have ceiling and then we have floor. Just like with a room in a house, say for example, if I had this box and let's say that represents my room, the ceiling is up at the top and the floor is down at the bottom. That exact same concept applies with airspaces. When we're talking about the ceiling, we're talking about the top altitude at which that airspace exists. And then when we're talking about the floor, we're talking about the bottom of that airspace. So for a lot of these airspaces, the inner circle is going to be surface level. And the reason for that is because planes will be landing there, right? Obviously, you wouldn't want to be flying your drone on an airplane's runway because inevitably a collision will happen and then the FAA will call you and they'll be like, what the heck were you thinking? That was so dangerous. Planes are landing here and you'll probably get fined. So let's go ahead and avoid doing that by learning the ceilings and floors of airspace. Something important to point out in the problem is that it tells us for the airspace at the shelf area, outer circle. So we can kind of ignore our inner circle here and we can just look at that circle that I've outlined. I think it helps if we visualize class C airspaces with an image. So right now we're looking at it top down. It's maybe a little bit harder to wrap our minds around these airspaces. So here is an image of what a class C airspace looks like. So it's kind of that upside down wedding cake concept where we have this inner ring, you can see it touches the surface, the surface of the ground, okay? And then it goes up to some distance. So that's our ceiling. And then here's our floor. And then you can see the outer ring. The floor is here and the ceiling is up here. So this is pretty typical of class C airspaces. I say typical and not always the case because there are some class C airspaces that are slightly different, maybe because they're near certain geographic landmarks, but in general, class C airspaces look like this, this upside down wedding cake. So right now uh, we're only focused on this top tier of the upside down wedding cake. There are some numbers within this sectional chart that should help us figure out the floor of our airspace. And those numbers are 41 over 13. Uh, the cool thing about the way that this information is presented to you is it aligns almost perfectly with what your expectation of ceiling and floor is because just like before with my little diagram, we had our ceiling up top and then our floor down bottom. Um, we can kind of disregard the 41 ceiling and we can look at this 13 floor. So obviously the floor is not at 13 feet. That would be kind of ridiculous. When you see one number over another, you're gonna want to add two zeros after those first numbers. We would say that the floor of our outside circle is 1300 feet, but now we also need to figure out if this is an MSL or AGL. And then let's sort of talk about what those two things are. So we have MSL. MSL is defined as the true altitude above standard sea level. So this is mean sea level. So when you see MSL, think sea level. Okay. On the other hand, AGL is defined as your altitude above current ground level. So this is short for above ground level. 
The difference between these two is slight, but in another way, it can be very, very large, okay? So remember that sea level, the altitude at which the sea is, typically MSL is going to be greater than or equal to AGL. And the reason for that is because at mean sea level, so let's say you're at sea level, what that is is zero feet. But AGL is how far you are above ground level. So if the sea is here, and let's say we've got some sort of tower, let's say, let's say it's on some sort of rock formation, we've got this tower. If we wanted to find the MSL of this, we would start measuring it from sea level. So that would be our MSL. However, AGL is above ground level. So we wouldn't start at sea level, we would, we would find ground level here and then we would measure it like that. So here's what AGL is. So when I say that mean sea level is normally greater than above ground level, this will be true obviously except for when whatever you're measuring is exactly at sea level in which case MSL and AGL will be the same. But in general, you can assume it mean sea level will be greater. So we've kind of gotten over those two different ways to represent altitudes. The general guideline with sectional charts is that all this information is presented to you in mean sea level, so MSL, unless it is in a parenthesis. So let me point out some AGL numbers. So we've got this is an AGL number. Where else we have? We've got this, this, this. And you know, for the most part, you'll see that the number that's above is in MSL and it's greater than this lower number, which is in AGL. In general, these sectional charts use MSL. Since this uh, 41 over 13 is not in parentheses, we can assume this is an MSL. So I would say that our final answer is 1300 feet MSL. So let's go ahead and compare these, see if it matches any of our answers. And yes, exactly. So the answer to this one would be B. A is incorrect because notice the only difference between A and B is A is an AGL above ground level and B is an MSL. But as I said before, that number is not an AGL, it's an MSL. So A would be incorrect. And then C would be incorrect. We've got the right We've got the right measurement of altitude, but we don't have the right altitude. So in this question, the correct answer is B. Let's go ahead and look at another problem. Maybe take a little bit of time to read over the problem yourself, read over the answers, look at this chart and see if you can come to the answer on your own and then continue the video and see if you got it right. So I'm gonna go over it now. The airspace overlying McKinney is controlled from the surface to, and then we have these answers that we're going to be ignoring. The original figure is massive massive. Thank God they tell us which area to look at because you can just sort of zoom in on that instead of having to be like, okay, TKI uh, is the airport letters. Where is that on this chart that has so much information? No, 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 no. Just zoom in on area seven. So we zoomed in on area seven. Here's what that looks like. And um, what airspace would you say that this is? And how can you tell? If you answer that this is a class D airspace, you're exactly correct. With our class D, we've got this dotted, or I guess, sorry, we've got this dashed line around it and it's blue. Within our sectional chart legend, it actually tells you what each of the class airspaces look like. So that exactly matches up with our class D airspace. So if you got that right, give yourself a little pat on the back. And let's see, what is the question asking us for? It's asking us that it's controlled from the surface to what? It doesn't specifically say it here, but what we're asked for here is the ceiling. The ceiling of this airspace. The reason I know this is it's saying it's controlled from the surface to what? So the surface is what we're defining as our floor, and we're defining the floor as zero because it's the surface. So we want to find the ceiling of our airspace. So just like in the previous problem, there the information is right in front of us. We just need to figure out which numbers to pick out of this section of chart. If we once again look at our legend, there is some very helpful information we can look at here. Right below this class D airspace that we just looked at, there's another piece of information that is so important I'm going to zoom in and up on it. Hopefully it's not too blurry. You can see the ceiling of a class D airspace in hundreds of feet if it's in this square that's a little broken up and if it has a minus ceiling value it indicates surface up to but not including that value. 
So let's go ahead and see if we can find a number within that square that matches up to our legend. So if you have a keen eye, you'll see ding, 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 ding. We have this 29 that's inside of that square. So that means that the ceiling of the class D airspace is 29. Ceiling is 29. And of course, this is not 29 feet. It's in hundreds of feet. So we want to just append two zeros there. So it's in, so it's actually uh, 2,900 feet. And then just like before, we need either an MSL or an AGL. This is not in parentheses. So we can assume it's going to be in MSL. So that is our answer. So if we compare it to the responses, we can see that A, is correct. That is 2,900 feet MSL. We've got the right altitude. We've got the right altitude description, mean sea level. B is incorrect because we don't have the right altitude. And C is incorrect because we don't have the right altitude and we don't have the right altitude descriptor either. It's not AGL, it is MSL. Hopefully that helps you figure out the ceiling and floor of airspaces on sectional charts. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to them as fast as I can. And hopefully you have a great rest of your day.